the last few weeks, I've been incredibly lucky that I've been able to spend some time shooting with the Hasselblad H6D with the 100C back. So this is a 100 megapixel camera and the whole kit that I've been using costs about $40,000. We took a trip to Vancouver for the Junos, Canada's National Music Awards, so I used it as a chance to test the Hasselblad for some real travel photography. And to get some B-roll for this video of me taking photos. I wanted to make this video because a while back I did a comparison of the Hasselblad H4D to a mobile phone, and a question I heard a lot is, how can a camera be that expensive? And plus, I just wanted an excuse to play with a really expensive camera. So if you've ever wondered how a camera can cost more than a car, let's take a look what that $40,000 is getting. This is the main body of the camera where the action happens. And the back here is the 100 megapixel part where you can also get a 50 megapixel option that works with the same body. But obviously the 100 megapixels is the, the fun one. And Hasselblads always have this detachable viewfinder, two batteries, uh, which are also handles. So this goes on like this. And the handle slash battery just locks in here securely. And in this kit, I have the 35 millimeter lens, which is f 3.5 and costs about $5,000. And this is the 80 millimeter 2.8 lens, which is about as perfect of a portrait lens as you can buy. And this costs $3,000. Okay, we're downtown Vancouver. Let's go find some photos. A funny thing about large print advertising like billboards is you can actually get away with a lot less resolution than you might think because typically people are looking from too far away to need 100 megapixels because even the 12 megapixels has been plenty for Apple to run its shot on iPhone campaign. To see the difference in a large print, the viewer needs to be pretty close, but then the difference can be stunning. An example of that might be printed art in a gallery. There's also huge advantages in the color depth, moire, and kind of the expansion of focal lengths that you get from a medium format. The few photographers that know that they need a camera to perform at this level know what they're looking for. And the fact that there are so few of them is one more reason for the price to go up. This will never be a mass market product. They are built by hand for a very discerning customer. But what do I know? I've never spent this much on a camera, so let's talk to an expert that actually sells them. Hi, Chris. Hey, Tyler, how you doing? Good to see you again. So, Chris, obviously this is a camera to be envied, but in the end, like, who can justify a budget for it? Right, I think uh, it's, this is the perfect camera for parents with small kids. No, that's <laughs> a lie, it's not. This is gonna be your photography houses, your big corporate companies that are doing large reproduction, fashion work, you know, big editorials, that kind of stuff. And frankly, although the resolution is amazing and it's beautiful for avoiding moiré and for doing big prints, it also comes down to just having that clout and competing with fellow uh, photographers doing these big editorial projects, which can be worth tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So a lot of the time when cameras like this show up on set, it's also because the client just requested it because they require something of that level of quality. I know in the video world, a lot of the time the project dic dictates the camera instead of the actual shooter. Of course, another thing is that a lot of the time these cameras are rented as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some people are gonna rent these, some production houses will have enough money to buy them, and if an art director requests it, that's what you wanna show up with, otherwise the other person gets the work. We have to remember though too that as much as regular affordable cameras are becoming very capable, this is still the pinnacle, this is the edge, and this is the envelope, and a lot of artists wanna work there or we're pushing those limits. And so that's always gonna be a factor in this field of work. There are diminishing returns as you spend more on your gear. A $1,000 camera has most of the important features that you're gonna find in a $5,000 camera. But there's always professionals that are pushing the technical requirements of this gear to its extreme, and it's incredibly expensive to research, develop, and manufacture that cutting edge of technology. And that's who this camera is designed for. And then there's another group of people buying it that is the luxury market, because some people can just afford the best of everything. So, of course, they're going to want a camera that is handcrafted in Sweden. I don't happen to fall into either of those groups, so unfortunately I have to send my camera back to Hasselblad. But this thing really was a joy to shoot with, and I love when gear reconnects me to photography and gets me excited about the photos I'm gonna take. So that's it. I wish I'd had time to make a more in-depth review, but I just haven't had a lot of YouTube time lately. However, my podcast has been coming out every week, so go to stallmanpodcast.com where I'm talking about photography, video production, and talking to other creators about how we make the things that we do.
Okay, Fair Naked Ladies made my night.